Hi, good evening everyone. Um, tonight in this session we'll try to touch a little bit on this very important topic called love. The title that you will see over here, Love, the Ideal versus the Reality. There is a very, very disturbing gap between what many people, many people, of course there are exceptions, but many people feel that there is a, a gap between what we want about how love, and we have to explain what love is, will be in our life versus the reality. The reality is uh, slightly different than what we expect. And uh, that, I think, a good reason to analyze or discuss what love is. <clears throat> in the Torah, we have a very, very interesting and difficult and actually, in a way, impossible mitzvah that God command us to perform. It's called in Hebrew, Ve'ahavta l're'acha kamocha. Ve'ahavta l're'acha kamocha. Love your fellow the way you love yourself. I'll explain later why it's very, very difficult mitzvah to, come, to, to perform, but we have to know that love, it's not just between couples, husband and wife. This mitzvah is a general mitzvah. You have to love everyone. And the question is, what is love? Many people, when they will ask, what do you, how do you define love? love? Many people will answer, it's a strong feelings that they have towards something, towards somebody, right? But if so, if so, how somebody could command you to love somebody? If you have the feeling, you do not need any commandment. And if you do not, how by commanding you, you're going to create it, right? So that proves for sure that love is not feeling. When Hashem commands us do something, it means that if you do not have it now, you could work on it and make it, make it happen, right? So it should be something that you could work on it and get, get results, right? The mitzvah and the Torah about love uh, let me just skip a few things. I will go back maybe to, to them later. But let's go to the mitzvah. The mitzvah in the Torah is Ve'ahavta l're'acha kamocha. The right translation is You shall love your fellow as yourself. And it's mentioned at the end, Ani Hashem, Am Hashem. Let's, let's start from this. Let's try to understand the commandment. Every word. So the first thing is to analyze what love is. <clears throat> the second word is What is the meaning of this? The translation is not good. You have to know. Translation of anything in the holy language is always diminishing it and in many cases just even take it away, off from what it is. What is l'reacha? Do you know, by the way, here I have a translation like this, which is not good by itself, but you know what is the popular translation in uh, any Torah translated to English for this? How do you translate? Uh, uh, how do you translate ve'ahavta l'reacha? Love your friend, love your friend. No, no, no. How it's translated in the books? Anybody knows? Even in, in the reliable books, I mean, Orthodox translation to English, not Christian translation, Hebrew, Orthodox translation. You know how they translate it? 
Love your neighbor. Love your right? Your neighbor. Love your neighbor. And it's so wrong. <laughs> because it's not written in the Torah in the original. You know how do you say neighbor in Hebrew? Shachen. Do you see over here the Hafta Lishchincha Kamocha? You have to love your, love your neighbor? No way. Katupo Reacha, it's written over here Le Reacha. So the translation of Reacha should be literally your friend. Reacha, Rea is Chaver, is friend. But it's also, you cannot understand this because if this person is my friend, I have a positive <laughs> feelings toward him or her because they are my friend, right? So why do I need a commandment for this? So the, the, the closest thing is love your fellow. What's fellow? Everyone. What's fellow? Someone. Somebody like you, right? Someone like you. So let me tell you something, and you have to explain it right, because many people could take it wrong. The, the Torah says, Ve'ahavta l'reacha, l'reacha is re'acha b'mitzvot. Somebody who is like you, in what way? That they are in the same group as you, meaning Jews. Jews. Every Jew. Now here, it's sensitive. Why? Because people could take it mistakenly. Let me explain, so to be clear. We have to know that there is a difference between honoring somebody or respect somebody, actually, to love somebody. Respect is, some, is one thing, love is something else. <coughs> now, the Mishnah in Masechet Avot, the Mishnah in Avot says, Chaviv Adam Shenivra Betzelem. This is very important for me to emphasize. Every human being, Adam is a human being. Chaviv Adam, Adam is precious. Why? Because he was created in the image of God. Chaviv Adam Shenivra Betzelem. He is a Tzelem Elokim. Now, the Mishnah bring a verse in the Torah to show us that every human being is, a pre is precious. And the, the pasuk that the, Torah, the Mishnah quote is in Sefer Bereshit, in Parashat Noach, in the commandment that Hashem gave to Noach, one of the seven things that Noach got as a mitzvot, right? Sheva mitzvot ne Noach. One of them is don't kill. Don't murder. So it's mentioned in the Torah like this. Shofech dam ha'adam, ba'adam damo yishafech, ki betzelem elokim asay ta'adam. Don't kill any other human being. Why? Because he is in the image of God. And those, this mitzvah was given to Noah before Avraham Avinu was born, before the Jewish nation is in the world. So, it includes every human being. Every human being is in the image of God. Therefore, every human being deserves respect. And of course, over here, the, the commandment is don't kill any human being. Because killing is allowed, as you know. We kill animal, animals for dinner, right? It's not considered murder. Why? They, are, they, are, they, they have a, they're living, they, they, they are living creatures, right? That's not considered murder. So what's the difference? Why human being? No vegetarians here, right? <laughs> right? So when you kill a chicken or a cow, you're not considered a murder, a murder, right? Why human being is different? Just because of one thing. Human being is in the image of God. What that means? That's a big story. That's a big thing. Many people quote it. You're in the image of God. What are you talking? Well, what image of God? What is this? Deep thing. That's not the time right now to discuss it. Anyway, let's go back here. We have in the Torah <coughs> 613 mitzvot. All the other people in the world, but the Jews, aside from the Jews, have seven mitzvot. Sheva mitzvot, Sheva mitzvot menoch, only seven. One of them is the don't kill, don't steal, etc. I'll go through them. 
Now, as Jews, we have all the seven, but we have more. Right? One of the extra ones that the Goyim do not have, the Gentiles do not have, and we have, is this one. Again, we have to respect every human being because every human being are in the image of God. Love, you have a mitzvah, a commandment to love every single Jew. Every Jew. There is no mitzvah to love non-Jews. There is no mitzvah to hate non-Jews, but not mitzvah to love. But you have a mitzvah to love every Jew. And the question again, how could you command me to love every, every Jew? I want to love every Jew, but there are many Jews, or not too many, that give me so many reasons not to love them. So how could you ask me or demand from me to love every, every Jew? And besides, how do you do this? Let's say I, 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 I met a Jew, I never met him in, in, my, in, his, in my life, I don't have any feelings to him, not negative, not positive. Now I have a commitment to love him. How? What, what do you do in order to love? Just to say it? It could be funny. Come, in, come on, just when you say I love, many people even when they say I love you, they do not mean it. But just to say it, it's, what is it? And if God commanded us, it means there is such a thing in our ability. So here we have to understand what love is. Let's go to the third word over here, which is the most difficult one. What is kamocha? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. Be aware of the following. First of all, there is an assumption over here, a hidden assumption. The assumption is that you love yourself, right? Now, the commandment is, the same way you love yourself, love the other, okay? Is the assumption right? Is it for sure that everybody loves themselves? No, unfortunately. There are people who do not like themselves. And we have to know, be aware of the following, this is a very important one. Anybody who do not love himself, herself, will never ever be able to love others. So, first of all, there is an assumption that you love yourself, and actually this is what you should do. A healthy, healthy person, I'm not talking just about physically healthy. Healthy person should love himself. And after you love yourself, the commandment here is, this is it. Love the others, but not just, you know, have empathy or sympathy to them. Love them the way you love yourself, not less. Wow, this is big. So first of all, we have to learn how to love ourselves. After that, we have to know that we obligated to love every Jew. To love every Jew. Okay, the last question over here are the last two, two words over here. Ani Hashem. How that is connected. What do you mean Ani Hashem? I'm Hashem, I'm God who commanded you to say it, right? To, to, to perform it, to do it. But in the, in the Torah we have 613 mitzvot, 613 commandments. Not at the end of each one of them it says Ani Hashem, I'm the commander, God. Why here? It's not the only place, but obviously it's here. The question is why? Okay? Those are the questions. So now we could start. All right. Let's start first to understand <coughs> what love is. And I think the best way to do it is try to be spontaneous, not going through the order of the slides. I want to show you a story, tell you a story. I don't know if I have it here translated, maybe, maybe not. Famous story, famous to, <laughs> for those who knows the Jewish literature. Um, 
I believe everyone heard about Hillel and Shammai. Am I right? You know who's Hillel and Shammai? Yeah. Bet Hillel, Bet Shammai. Everybody knows? No. I'll try. I'll try to explain it for those who do not. Maybe. Hillel and Shammai were the leaders of the spiritual leaders of the Jewish people at the time of the second Beit HaMikdash, in the second temple. They lived approximately 100 years before the destruction of the second Beit HaMikdash. We're talking about approximately 2,000 years from now back. Okay? They, lived, they were in Yerushalayim, it was Beit HaMikdash there, the temple were there, and they were the heads of the Supreme Court of the Jewish nation. The Supreme Court called Sanhedrin. In the Sanhedrin we have 70 scholars, and the president of the Sanhedrin called Hanasi was Hillel. Hillel was the president of the Sanhedrin. Then you have 70 scholars, aside from the president, and they were sitting in the order of who is more important, meaning more scholar, more more wise. So the head of the 70 called Av Beit Adin. Av Beit Adin is the leader of the group itself, and there is a president above him. Okay? So at the time, Hillel was the president, and Shammai was the Av Beit Adin. He was the second to the president. Okay? Now it's a very interesting story. The Gemara tells us a story. The Gemara says the following. They were, they, they both were great. They, they, were, they knew the entire Torah. They were very serious in, but there is difference between intellectual. They were both very, very intellectual. But you know, every intellectual person has his personality also. And the Gemara explained or taught us or that it was a major difference in the personalities between Shammai and Hillel. Shammai was more serious, straight, straight to the point, and he was very, very intellectual. Hillel was the same in his uh, wisdom, but he was very popular. He's down to earth. He, he, was, could relay to people that was not in his level, right? That's in general. So the Gemara tells a very interesting story. <clears throat> One day, uh, at the time, came a Gentile. A Gentile, honest person that heard about the Jewish nation, and at the time, you know, the Jewish nation was not that popular. The, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was a very tough time, but he decided, he decided that the Jewish religion is the right one, and he wanted to convert to Judaism. So, he wanted to convert to Judaism. He came to Shammai. He find him not in, in court, but in the field, outside, and he came to him with this uh, request. I'm a Gentile, I want to be a Jew. I understood that in order to be a Jew, I have to understand what Judaism is all about. And I'm just, you know, I have to know. This is a club, I want to know the rules of the club, what's doing, what's the idea, what's the philosophy, what's the obligations. I know that there is something called Torah. And I even know that there are 613 mitzvot, uh, commandments in the Torah. And I really want to be a Jew. Now, I heard that you are a very big scholar. You know Judaism, right? Could you do me a favor? Convert me. I know that I have to understand what Judaism is. I'm ready to do it. But I don't have too much time. Could you do me a favor? Summarize for me the entire Torah. Don't send me now for three years to learn in yeshiva. I have no time for this. And he asked him the following. Because you're so genius, could you summarize to me the entire Torah 
while I'm standing on one foot. You know, even acrobat that could stand on one foot for a long time, but there is a limit, you know, a few hours, maybe a day, two days, but then it will put the other foot down, right? That's what he asked him. This is the time that they have for this. Could you do it? Shammai looked at him and says to him, I'm, I'm using my words. The Gemara says that he, he, he told him, you are not realistic. But in my words, Shammai says to him the following. You want to be a Jew. You understand that in order to be a Jew, you have to understand what Judaism is all about. You understand this. That's why you came to me in order to teach you. You do not have time. So go now home. When you have time, come back. <laughs> I cannot do it instant. It doesn't work this way. So he was very disappointed, this, this person. But he didn't give up. He heard that there is somebody above Hil Shammai. Hillel. So he went to Hillel, all the way to Hillel, to the president. And he came to him with the same thing. I'm a Gentile, I want to be a Jew. I understand that I want to understand what Judaism is all about. Could you summarize to me the entire Judaism? When I'm standing on one foot. So Hillel looked at him. And as we said before, Shammai was straight to the point, doesn't have time for, for games. You don't have time, come on, what are you talking about? You want to be a doctor? without practicing. You cannot do it. Why Judaism you could do? Come on. Hillel was more popular. He was more down to earth. He looked at this Gentile in his eyes and he saw that he is a very honest person. There's only one problem. He is a little bit naive. He thinks that it's possible to learn Judaism in a very short time. So he performed on him a trick a very genius trick. He told him, no problem. You want to know the entire Torah? Let me tell you what the entire Torah. And he picked up from the entire Torah, from the, all the 613 commandments in the Torah, he picked one, the most impossible one to perform, and he told him, but he didn't even tell him, and this is this one. <coughs> and he even not told him it the way it is. What's written over here? The Ahavdan Recha Kamoch. He didn't say this to him. He says to him the following. You want to know what the entire Torah is? The entire Torah is the following. Man de Sani, I'll say it in Aramaic and translate it. Man de Sani Alach Lechavrach Lot Avid. Whatever you hate that people will do to you, don't do to others. This is the entire Torah. Don't do to others things that you do not like that people will do to you. There is no such a mitzvah in the Torah. But actually, he meant this one. This one is a positive one. Do. But the implication of it, and that's what he told him, if you love him the way you love yourself, of course you do not want to do to him things that you do not want people to do to you. So he didn't even pick one mitzvah the way it is. He just says the implication of it. Right? That's what he said. But, and many people read this story and they are very happy. They say, wow, Hillel is a good one for me. Why? Because I'm like that. I'm a very good person. I'm not hurting a cat. I, I, I'm, I, I'm very good. I'm trying to do good. Right? I really, I really want that everybody will be happy. So that's the entire Torah. This is Judaism. That's very good Judaism for me. I don't need to keep Shabbat. I don't need to, to put filin. I don't need to, to eat kosher. Nothing. Just be a nice person. What's the problem with this? They cut the story in the middle. Because you have to understand. This Gentile, when he came to Hillel and to Shammai, he knew the basic. He knew that Judaism includes 613 <laughs> commandments. He knew that in advance. That's what he want to learn, right? And Hillel and Shammai themselves also knew it. So how Hillel could, told, could tell him this? You want, you want to know the entire Torah? The entire Torah is, don't do to others what you do not want people to do to you. How Hillel could say such a thing? 
What about the others? Let's say, let's say it's one mitzvah. What about the other 612? So, there is a continuation there. Let me tell you then the, the rest of the story. He told him, again, Hillel telling him, you know, want to know the entire Torah? This is the entire Torah. Don't do to others what you do not like people to do to you. Zoi kola Torah kula. This is the entire Torah. Ve'idach. Ve'idach means, it's in Aramaic, ve'idach. And the rest. And the rest, meaning the, the rest 612. The rest are the explanation of this one. Zilgmo. Go learn. And actually, what is this trick over here? It's true, it's not a trick, but what actually he said? He said the following. The entire Torah is to elevate a human being from being egoistic, that everything is around me, and look at the other as human, being, as human beings like you, right? This is take you out of being egoistic. This is the purpose of the entire Torah. It's impossible to do. It's impossible to do. You have to know we all egoistic and it's very nature, natural thing. And when Hashem command us not to be egoistic, to be altruistic in the right way, he apparently asks us, ask us to do something impossible. But if he asks or demand or request this from us, demand this for us, it should be possible. Because if not, it doesn't make any sense. And God, who created us, know exactly what we could do and we, what we could not do. But apparently it, seem, it seems, and I'll explain this, it seems impossible. So he takes from the Torah the impossible thing to do, and he said it's impossible, right? But if Hashem commands this, it should be possible. How it, be pos it will be possible? In order to understand how it's possible and practice it, you have to learn the entire 612. This is the explanation of it. Without it, you will never be able to do it. So now everything becomes so mysterious. What are they talking about? Okay? Fine. So let's try to understand this. <clears throat> There is a big lie that is very popular <coughs> today in the modern society, but it's not just today, it's all probably. Popular lie. Something that almost everybody uses, but it's the, 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 the lie. And this is the understanding of what love is. What is love? <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna be here very, very strong, but you asked it when you ordered this lecture. <laughs> I'm gonna be very strong. In the modern society, especially modern, I mean in the generation of technology, the way that we have today, Almost each one of us and our children was brought, grew up on this lie. The lie is the word love or the notion, love. As we know, the educator of this generation in the last 70 years, let's say, 70, 80 years, the educator is not the teachers, are not the teachers in schools, are not the parents. The educator of every almost human being around the globe is Hollywood. Hollywood. Hollywood has access to the last home in Indonesia. Right? Everybody has a TV, everybody has, now do not even need TV. You have everything in your cell phone. And one of the things that they took on themselves to teach or educate the 
the people around the world, one of the things is what love is. All the movies, almost all of them, is around love, right? And you have to know, since you are very, very little kid, even if you see cartoons, innocent cartoons, the story is about love. Even between children, you know, the prince and the princess and all this stuff. It's all, since you zero, you know, a baby in the crib, watch it. And then they grew up and uh, they see, they watch it until the age of 70, 80, 100. And this, more than anything else, will teach us, is the thing that influences under our understanding what love is. And here is the most amazing, horrible damage that they cause everyone. And therefore, the society looks the way it looks. What love is, according to Hollywood? I don't know if you heard this story before, but even if you heard it, I will use it now again. For sure you never heard it the way you are gonna hear it from me now. The story is about somebody who liked food. And he heard that there is a very famous, uh, with a good reputation of a restaurant. So one day he got to the restaurant and he was alone, he's ordering Came to the restaurant, wants to eat a lunch, and he was about to order. So <clears throat> they came to him with a menu, and you know he has to choose from the menu. If you visiting restaurants, I don't have to tell you that the menus are very hard to understand. They give names to you know to to food that only I don't know if you're not Italian or Chinese or. You don't understand what they're talking about. The, the, the name. They give a name. Now, what is in it? So he looked at the menu. He didn't understand a word. So the waiter came to him. Okay, what's your order? He said, give me a few minutes. Okay, he tried to look at it again, tried to understand. He didn't understand. Before him came to the restaurant somebody else, and he was uh, already ordered. And the waiter called, went to the kitchen to give his order, to, to bring his order, right? So he asked him, listen, you are familiar with the things? Could you recommend to me? Because I, I really do not know what to... Uh, so he asked him, what is, uh, what is the best, the good food over here? What did you order? So he told them, I ordered fish. <coughs> Why did you order fish? Because I love fish. Oh, oh, he start, he used the word love. He loved fish. From this point, the discussion started to be philosophy. You love fish. So he told him, listen, don't ever use this word. You love fish. She said, why? I love fish. You do not love fish. Why? Because if you love the fish, why did you fish it? If you love the fish, you, want, you love the fish, right? If you ask the fish, what, where's the best place that he wants to be? In the water. When you fish him out, you already cause him a problem. He, he, he could not breathe, right? He's, he's going like this, he's twisted. He for sure not feeling comfortable. Now let me show you what you do in the name of love to the fish. First of all, you take him out of the, his best place, his comfortable place. You took him out against his will, for sure. If you ask him if he could talk, he will say, put me back. You took him out. So he started to suffer. He's twisting, he's, he's really nervous, right? Because you love him so much, you could not see it. You could not see him suffering. So what do you do? Take a big thing, put it in his head, and make him not move anymore, because you could not see him suffering, right? After you killed him, because you still love him very much, you took him to the kitchen, cut him, put a frying pan, put in oil, make sure that the oil is really boiling. 
right? Then you take the fish, put them in the oil, cook them, burn it, make it well done, well done. <laughs> burn from all sides, right? Crispy. Crispy. Then you continue, your love is just endless to this fish. You so love him, right? So you took him to your plate, you cut him with your knife and fork, eat him to the last piece. Do not leave anything. And all of this in the love that you have toward the fish. You a liar. You do not love the fish. You love yourself eating fish. So don't ever use those words, I love fish. You do not love fish. Okay? This is the story. Now, let's go out and try to understand how the Western society use the term I love, not just fish. You know, young couple goes together in the romantic uh, environment. Wow, they start to build a relationship. She is already waiting and waiting and waiting for him to say something, but he's not, he has time, he doesn't want to be in a rush. She's waiting for the magic words to be, to hear the word. He has time. Probably in most of her relationships, she will say it before, three words. I love you. And maybe later on, he will be convinced and he also will say it. I love you. What actually they mean when they say those words? I love you. I'm sorry to say it, but this is exactly the love of the fish. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't love you, I love me. You are, I found out, the best think that could please me and give me what I need. This is it. It's so, so not loving. It's so egoistic. I love me. The same way I love fish. I love me eating the fish. I love me being with you. I love me. And she is the same. <laughs> Don't, <laughs> you have to understand. It's not that he is the wicked one and she is the innocent, righteous. I mean, in the beginning, it's like this. Maybe, you know, at the age of 12, today it's become the age of eight. I don't know where it's going to go. But after three, four boyfriends, <coughs> she will also understand. And her mother will tell her, don't trust men. They're all the same. So she will understand. In the cynical way, world that we love today, you have to get, you have to take care of yourself. Nobody's gonna take care of you, right? You take care of yourself. So actually, when too mature, let's say, guy and girl getting together, and finally they say, "I love you," that exactly what they mean. I love me being with you. You love, I love you. And you, the same, you said the same thing. So it's a business. It's a business. It's not, I'm in the center, my in, in the center, my interest in the center. When I'm with you, you know why I'm in, with you? Sorry to say it this way. You know why I'm with you? I'm saying that from the main point of view, but it's, it, it's true from the lady point of view as well. Why I'm with you? Because from all the girls that I knew or met in my life, I find out that you are the one who could give me whatever I need in the lowest price. <laughs> so, so sad. <laughs> Meaning that if tomorrow I will meet somebody that will give me everything that you're giving me and a little bit more with drop little of the price, I have to be completely stupid to be with you, to stay with you. That way it is. And that way <laughs> the connection or the romantic or, you know, Hollywood with this attitude and everybody learned it from Hollywood. Let me explain the very, very major thing. Every movie 
that deals with, you know, romantic, shows the guy in a certain way. He has to be maybe smart, but for sure wealthy, with a lot of money, successful businessman, or any other things with power, married to a beautiful lady, but look at them. Check one after another movies. It's always in the story a third person. Because he's so charismatic and so nice and so popular. Even though he's married, he has somebody outside of the marriage. Of the marriage. And she always should be beautiful. She, always. Right? And she could be married, but she has somebody else. This is, the, this is the narrative. Look, all the movies in this way or that way. Okay. Now, when people see this once, twice, I mean, how many, how many movies people see in their life? Nobody could say that, you know what, it's just a movie. It's not just a movie. This is the educator. This is the thing that make in the norms in the society. You know what happened to a, a little boy? <laughs> who watch this kind of movies. It starts from the cartoons, but then it goes, right? In his head, or her head, I'm talking again, it could be a boy or a girl. People, in order to grow, to develop, they need heroes in their life. They need, not just children, even adults. When I am in business, right? I have a role model. Somebody, okay, I want to reach this level. I want to be like him. For sure, little children. In order to grow, they have to identify themselves with somebody. So what's the healthy way or the right way? That a little boy that has a healthy family, healthy relations in the family. He has parents that live good together, they love each other, truly. They respect each other. This baby will grow up, he will see the way his father relate to the society, to relate to his mother, to his wife. The little kid watching and observing everything. So the ideal should be that the father will be the role model of the, of the baby. The baby will see, when I will grow up, I want to be like my father. The ideal woman that I want to be married should be like my mother. <coughs> Same way the little girl. She's thinking about what she's going to do. And I want a husband that will be exactly look like my father, because my father is something that I appreciate. And the ideal lady is my mother. Unfortunately, in the beginning it's like this, but it takes really short time until this image of the role model of the parents in the eyes of the children completely collapse. They know, they see, you know, my father will behave like that and like that. I don't want to be like him. My mother behaves like this. I don't want to be like her. That's not the person that I want to marry to. This is not the kind of person that I want to get married. So when it's collapsed, what happened? There is a vacuum. The vacuum could not stay a vacuum. Something else should be in. And what they adopt as a role models? The heroes from the TV. I want to be like him. I want to be like her. This is the ideal wife. This is the ideal husband. So. If you expose your children and yourself, and yourself, it's not just all of your children. They are not the only helpless. We are also helpless if we expose ourselves to these things. It influences us, no doubt. I want to be like him, says the little boy. Be successful, be rich, look nice, get married, but I will be cool. I will have a lot from the side also. Like in the movie. 
For girls, it's much harder. Unfortunately, I mean, this is the nature, but that, that damage was Hollywood did. Who they choose to be the actresses in the, in the movies? Always a beautiful lady that looked good, right? What we could do, not all of the girls that will be born and watch this movie will be beautiful like them. But they said, this is the standard. You have to be thin, you have to be this, you have to be that. And all those girls are miserable because they want to, they know that if they want to be successful in life, they have to be married to this rich man, to be look like this. And then comes all the psychological and physical things. Anorexia and all of these things. Everybody wants to be like the, 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 you know. But the norms, the norms are the problem. <coughs> they set in rules, they set in norms. It's normal. It's normal not to be faithful in your marriage. It's normal. It's all the movies said so. All of them. It's very normal. They ruin completely the notion called love. This is love. This is not love. What is real love? So after we said what love is not and what, and be aware, 99% of the society around the world getting this this way, the wrong way. What is real love? Real love is just the opposite. <coughs> just the opposite. As we describe, the love of the fish is I'm here, I'm the center, I'm the important one. Everything around me is to serve me. As, as long as I feel that they serve me, I'll be connected to them. The minute that I see that it's not, I'm dropping, just. So you, you develop to create an egoistic people, egoistic, egoistic personality. Hillel says to this Gentile, you want to know what the purpose of the entire Torah? To be able not to be egoistic and take care of the interest of the other the same way that you take the interest of yourself. This is a big work. It seems impossible, but it's possible because Hashem commanded it. What is the secret? What is the secret? Okay, the following things that I'm gonna say over here will be very deep, I hope it will be okay. I mean, we, we could connect with this. In order to understand how you could be, you could be not egoistic, but what's called in psychology, altruistic. Altruistic is to give up, not to take in. We have to understand what the human being is, really is. We have to understand who we are. Remember I said before, the key word over here is this word. So the first thing is to understand who you are. And many people do not know who they are. Why? Tell you what. The Torah taught us that when Hashem created a human being, a human being is a combination of two things. Body and a soul. Hashem adam afar min Afar min dust from earth, is the, the thing that built our physical dimension, which is the body. But into this, Hashem added or combined with this, a spiritual dimension, the soul. This is you. Many people in the world have no clue about the soul. They know that they have a body. They have no choice but to know that they have a body because the body is demanding. And you identify yourself with your body, with your body and with, with the body needs. Body, by, by definition, 
the source of ego, egoism, the source of it, the essence of it, is the fact that we have a physical body. How? Body is a material. <coughs> material is limited, any material, not just the human body, any material in the world, in the, in the universe, any material is limited by time and space. <coughs> there is a space that this material take place, take place, this, the place is from here to here, right? This is the, and the other thing is time. Time and place are the limits of the physical. In the timeline we have three imaginary points, the past, the present, and the future. Everything, every physical thing in the scale is only on one little point, the present. The past is over. The future is not here yet. All what we have is the moment. So we are limited to be now and to be here. Here is the limitation of space, here and not there. Now is the limitation of time. Now, every physical thing is limited by time and space, including our body. And that will create the essence of the body, or of the material in general, the body. In philosophy, the definition of material, any material, is the material by definition. In their essence, they are suffering from a lack. There is a chisaron. There is something that's missing. Why? How? Let me explain. Let's take um, one of the body needs. That's in every human being and also in animals and also in plants. In order to exist, we have to... We have to eat. We have to drink. Let's talk about those two. There are many other needs of the body, but let's talk about those two. We need to eat, we need to drink. Right? But be aware of the following. When you need to eat, you're hungry. When you're hungry, you feel not comfortable. Right? And because you feel uncomfortable, it's push you to just push away everything in your agenda today or just go eat because it could not function if you'll not eat. Okay, so let's say you're very hungry, you came, you have a place with the good food that you really like, you eat. You eat, you're not hungry anymore, you're satisfied, right? For how long? <laughs> There's a difference between people. Some people for a few hours, some people for a few minutes. But even if you eat a very good meal, you're completely satisfied. You do not have to do anything in order to be hungry again. Just wait. Just wait. See, this is the limit of time. The limit of time, we have needs. We could satisfy the need, but it always will be for a short time. And then you go back to the point that you're lacking and you need again to refill. And then you go back automatically. You know, and here's the difference. You know, in order to eat, when I'm hungry, when I want to be not hungry, I have to do something active. I have to go and eat. After I eat, I have to do nothing to be hungry again. It automatically goes there. That's made it in the essence of the physical. The essence of it is luck, is missing. Every time that you refill it, it's Temporary. By the way, I always say, say this in the lectures. One of the things that also we need is to not to be tired, right? So you have to know the nature of people is to be tired. When you're not tired, let me prove it again. When you're very tired, you have to do something in order not to be tired. You have to sleep. If you woke up after 12 hours of good sleep, you do not have to do anything in order to be tired. Just wait or go to a lecture. <laughs> You'll find yourself tired again. <laughs> Automatically. So feel good if you're tired now. <laughs> This is the essence of the material. 
The material is always going to the natural state. The natural state of the material is luck. Luck means missing, something missing. And here's a very beautiful thing for those of you who know Hebrew, and for those who do not, I will explain, I'll translate. How do you say material in Hebrew? Chomer. Be aware of the letters, four letters. Chomer, Chet, Mem, Vav, Resh. If you will take the Mem out from the word Chomer, you will get a word by itself, Cho. What is Cho? Cho is a vacuum. Chalal. Vacuum. So the main letters in the word Chomer is vacuum, which is the essence of it. Meaning, it's empty. Everything that you refill will be temporary and will go back to the natural state, which is lack, which is ho. Now look, this is beautiful. Take the same letters of the word, the word ho, chet, vav, and resh. Change the order. First will be the resh, then the vav, and then the chet. What, what word you got? Ruach. Ruach is just the opposite of the Chomer, of the Chor. And here's the secret. We have body, we have soul. The body is always missing. Therefore, when you're missing, how do you refill? You take from outside, inside. Because you do not, you could not, you're not feeling comfortable when you're missing things, right? So this is the source of egoism, taking from out in. What's the source of it? The body. The opposite of the body is the spiritual dimension, which is called Ruach. And the Ruach is the spirit, the spirit, the spiritual dimension is just the opposite. It's not missing anything. It's complete, it's full, but it wants to radiate. <coughs> from inside, outside. So you find over here two arrows. One arrow go from you out, and one arrow come from out in, right? Human being is a soul inside a body. Many people in the world do not know it. If you ask them who you are, they have no clue that they have a soul. And even if they heard that there is such a thing, they have no clue what is this and how to manage it. How? And people could live with this 40, 50, 60, 100 years, not knowing and not relate to their spiritual dimension. All their interest in life is the body and the needs of the body and this way, because of this, they wake up in the morning, they go to work, they want to need... Why they go to work? They need money. Why they want no, the it's money? Not true wait, 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 wait. It's a point in life, they realize it. The lucky ones. Some people could live egoistic, materialistic all their life. Everything is around me to serve me because I am the center of the universe. <laughs> They egocentric, everything. This is the philosophy of many people live like this. Those people will never be able to give. Never. And if they will give, they will give in order to get. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And be aware of the following. Somebody who is giving in order to get is not a giver. He is a sophisticated taker. It's a business. I will take, I'll give some in order to get more. So you could be, and many, many people unfortunately live running this, their life this way. This is just the opposite of what love is. Love is to give without any calculation of what I get from this. If I give in order to get, again, I'm not a giver. I'm a taker. Love is to give without any calculation. You know what? What do I gain from it? And this is the commandment of the Torah. And that what Hillel says to this Gentile. You want to know what Judaism is all about? Giving without taking. Really, how it could be? It seems impossible. 
So it's impossible for people who do not know that they have a spiritual dimension. The physical do not know how to give. It will never give. If it will give, it's in order to take. So in order to really give, you have to know your hidden dimension, which is the soul, the neshama. And this is the meaning of all the mitzvot. All the 600, as Hillel told him, this is the entire Torah. It's impossible to perform. You know how it will be possible? If, if, if in every physical thing that you do, you will give it a spiritual meaning. Then you'll elevate the physical, take it out of the limits of time and space, and connect it to the infinite, indefinite, and in to the eternity, to the infinite. If everybody is giving, if what? Let's say everybody decides to give, and everybody's going to be hundred percent correct. The whole universe. So nobody will get. Everybody will give. You, I will give you, you'll give me. I 100% giving, you 100% getting, but I, but you still you still could be 100% given. That would be the best, believe me. Let's try this recipe. I'm telling you, the world will change. It's kind of okay to take then. What? It's kind of okay to take then. Of course, of course. It's okay to take. Of course it's okay to take. But it's not could be the purpose. I'm not the center of the universe. My physical needs are not the main thing. Of course I use it. But I, have to, I have to live. It's okay to get. It's okay to get. But you have to know that the purpose is to give. You could give and get. It's not, it's not a problem. It's not, but when you, own, you only get and not give, this is a problem. And this is the way things, things look like today. And it's not just in romantic. It's in business and everywhere. You know, I will do business with you. I'll take you to be my worker or my partner if I feel that you contribute to my profits. <laughs> if I feel that taking you lose me money, I'm, you're going to be fired tomorrow or today. Right? So it's all interest. So what's actually the Torah teach us? The Torah teach us that a human being could be more than just physical needs. The physical dimension is the, the egoistic things. We are here to be aware of our physical needs, treat them well even, but don't turn them to the purpose. This is just the mean, it's not the purpose. In order to be a good person, I have to live, and I have to live decently, and I have to eat properly, and I have, it's okay. I could drive a nice car. I mean, a car that could serve me. I do not have to, to be crazy to get things that I do not need, because it's wasting time. You're here, this is not the real purpose. This is the mean. The mean should be proper, but not more than that. They could not be the purpose. The purpose is to radiate. And to give. And that could come only from the spiritual dimension. But the spiritual dimension and the physical are not separated. They are together. And this is the art of life. The art of life is not live physical or spiritual. By the way, this is the mistake that the world around us do. You know... People in the world realize that there is a physical and a spiritual. Or, I, it's not accurate to say, to call it spiritual. Physical and non-physical. It's better, non-physical. They realize that every human being has a physical need and non-physical needs. And people even realize that they are contradict each other. How they solve the problem not in Judaism, around the world. They solved it, but they solved it wrong. In the East, the East religions and the East philosophy, they realized physical and spiritual are contradict each other. What's more important? Spiritual. The physical is the enemy. So let's get rid of it. And who is holy in the East? 
The person who just disconnects from themselves from the society, go to a very lonely place, eat very little, didn't, because the, the, the Nazir, the, somebody who just get, get rid of, make the physical, in the minimum of the minimum, and of course their physical needs are not fulfilled. So their physical body are suffering, but they're spiritual, they're very spiritual. They, they, they live, you know, in seventh heaven. They're, they're spiritual. In the east, that's, that's in the east, in the west. In the west, they realize the problem. Spiritual and physical are enemies. What's more important? Physical. So let's kill the spiritual. It's not important. Let's push it away, do whatever you want. Don't anybody give you a moral? Forget about it. Do whatever you want. Now, they're both wrong. Because we have spiritual dimension and physical dimension. And we have to run them together in harmony. And this is exactly what Judaism is. What is mitzvot? What is the meaning of the word mitzvah? Mitzvot are a team. Tzavit. A team. Take physical, be physical. You have physical needs. God created you with physical needs. But give them the right time, the right amount. Do things that you really need. And every time that you do any physical thing, give it a spiritual meaning. Don't let it to be only in the physical dimension. This way, you will live your life in harmony. People who live this way, love themselves. If you do not live it this way, you do not love yourself naturally. You know why? Because you have a body in the soul. If you give the body everything, you do not relate to the soul, the soul will be sad and unhappy. If you give the soul everything, but you ju just not relate to the, 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 the body, the body will be unhappy. So the way to be happy is to understand that you have body and soul. You have to understand that they are not the same. This is a real art to make harmony between them. You could not do it by yourself. You need instructions. From who? From the one who created the body and the soul. And he knows the right balance. And he gave it to us in the set of the 630 minutes. And that's what he told him. You want to know how to love? To really love the other, meaning giving, not taking? In order to do that, you have to discover your spiritual dimension and run it right in harmony with the physical. <coughs> Therefore, you need to go learn the entire thing. And just not just learn, but practice it. This way you love yourself, and this way you will be able to love the others. This is the secret of love. I don't know if you ever heard this, but this is the entire Torah on one foot. That's exactly what Hillel, in his genius way, just put it in words. We have to know we bless in God every day. Baruch Eloheinu shebranu lichvodu. And he separate us, separated us as Jews. We're so lucky. He chose us from all the nations. And he gave us instructions. We got the, the, the recipe of life. We got it in Sinai. And you know what? Unfortunately, the nation around us knows it. And we do not know it. Many of us, they feel, no, I'm not special, I'm not, I'm like everybody else. What are you talking about? They know that you are the chosen people, the chosen person. You know why? Because you are the only one that get the instructions from the creator himself in Sinai. They know it. They built all their stuff on our Torah. So we have this treasure, we have, we're so lucky, we blessed God. And we say, Baruch Elokeinu Shebranu Lichvodo V'yivdilanu Min HaToim What's Toim? Toim are those who are wonder. They're looking. They want to be good. They're looking. They're trying this and this and this. This philosophy, this philosophy. But they always have doubt. Who said that it's true? So it's really suffering. You know, even if you want to be good, but you do not know how. 
only the ones who get access to the recipe that only the creator could give because he he created us and he only those could do something with this and that's us to him are the people who are wondering the to him who is also betet it's it's not to him it's written in tav tav those wonder people are going around and looking and don't don't find but to him betet is those who made mistake they think what Yes. yes, yes, exactly. So, in the Torah, and this is the story that I gave you here on the basic, right? This, this Gentile wants to convert, and he wants to learn Torah. He wants summary of the Torah. This is the summary of the Torah. The summary of the Torah is to discover who you really are, to discover you, discover yourself. Kamocha. And then you could love others the way you love yourself. But in order to do that, you need this. Ani Hashem. If you're not connected to me with the instructions that I gave you, you will never be able to do it yourself. There's no other way. This is it. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope everybody gains something from it. Thank you.